All right, people, Mr. Wright here with lesson seven for clarinet. In this lesson, we'll be talking about eighth notes, downbeats, and upbeats. We can determine what an eighth note is by this little bar right there. You see, quarter notes, they get one beat apiece, but these eighth notes, now these are quarter notes. They take up a quarter of the measure, and these eighth notes take up only an eighth of the measure. You can fit two of these eighth notes into one of these quarter notes. Right? You can fit both of those guys into this single quarter note, right? Half as long. And this these two eighth notes, they divide the beat into the first half of the beat and the second half of the beat, or the downbeat and the upbeat. Say you're tapping your foot on the floor, and here's um, when your floor when your foot taps the floor, that's the downbeat. When your foot comes up at the highest point, that's the upbeat. One and two and two and four. That and is the upbeat. If you ever hear one of your friends or they're dancing, they're going, oh, 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 it's birthday. Oh, oh, does, oh, that's your upbeat. Okay. So important. So there's, and then it's a lot of music where they emphasize the upbeat. So it's a, it's a cool thing to be able to feel and to create a music. So it's one, two, three, four, one, and, right? So that's the first half of the beat, second half of the beat, the downbeat and the upbeat. That's what these little arrows are all representing. Number one up here is pretty much pretty easy. Just kind of a little warm up there for you. So, but notice how these little downbeats and upbeats occur. Like one and two, three, four. One, two, three. Oops, let me fix my mouse. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. So it's this is all beat four. All right, first half of the beat, second half of the beat. Same thing right here, same thing right there. The first half of beat one, the second half of beat one. So it's one in, right? You got to know where that upbeat is. If you know where the upbeat is, if you can find that and not, if you get the upbeat, you, you won't rush the next downbeat. All right, you'll be able to appreciate, you need to be able to appreciate the upbeat feel. All right, and then number three one two three four one and two this is where we learn how to count them okay and you just write a little plus sign to say and one and two three four one two three four one and two three four one two three four and one two three four and one two three four and one two three four down here number four there's, they're just occurring in different places, like one and two, three, four and one and two, three, four, one and two, three and four, one and two and three and four and one. Now notice right here, I, I, when I look at this, I don't, when I play it, I don't look with my eyes at, I'll just look at the whole measure and kind of take a picture and say, oh, I'm just going back and forth between an F sharp and G. And I'm just going, they're straight eighth notes. So it's one and two and three and four and. So if I'm counting in my mind as I'm playing, I don't have to look at every last little note. Your eyes kind of get lost in all this gibberish of notes. So you just kind of realize, oh, it's just going back and forth. They're straight eighth notes. So I'm just going to go one and two and three and four and one like that. Okay. So you read it almost like a word as you would in English or whatever language. So, and then now here, number five is one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, three, four, one, and two, three, four, and one, and two, three, four, one, and two, three, and four, one, and, let me get my mouse again, one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, four and one, two, three, four. And down here, this crescendo, which we talked about earlier, you're just gonna automatically start soft. In music, it won't say start soft at the beginning. A lot of times, as band students will write it in when your director asks you to, but we're just gonna make it a habit to kind of, every time we see one of these, just kind of back off in volume, start soft and crescendo, faster air. And you don't wanna take a breath right here before this crescendo culminates into those two notes right there. It's going to drive into this little part right here. It's like, you know, what we experience in music is a reflection of the rhythms that we experience in life. Like pretending you're like at the beach, at the ocean, and this wave, you still feel the uh, undertow of the water drawing out. And then all of a sudden you hear this, right? And it breaks. 
it doesn't slowly undertow start to build, build, build. <laughs> you know, it doesn't pause right before it. So therefore, you don't want to take a breath right there. That would be bad. It just wouldn't be natural. You want it to be like a wave that crescendos into the downbeat of this next measure, all right, or wherever it's going to. So I always want to do that. And as you crescendo, you're blowing faster air. You're going to have to have a firm embouchure so that the note doesn't go flat. So you have to keep your embouchure firm as you're starting to blow faster air through that. And I think you can figure this out. One and two, three, four and one. And then it just does that. Okay, so you got that. So let's try lesson seven, exercise number one. Number one is kind of just a review from our open G to our F sharp first finger. So let's try number one. One, two, three. to number two right here this is the eighth notes again you can identify eighth notes with that little bar that connects the two of them together in the next lesson lesson eight we talk about a single eighth note all by itself and what it looks like it'll this little part right here say we'll chop this off right there that little bar right there will kind of droop down and do a little curl thing okay and it'll be all by itself and it just kind of curls up into fetal position and because it's sad and lonely and it'll be followed by a an eighth note rest. So anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's stay right here. This is an eighth note. When they're, they're grouped in twos, you'll see that bar connecting them. You can also see them in groups of four. All right. And they'll have just one bar connecting four little eighth notes all together. How quaint. Right? Number two. One, two, three. Right. The next one, right? All right. So that should get you going on lesson seven for clarinet. 